Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Bison, Thunder on the Prairie, not to be confused with Bison, the board game. This is a game about area control, manipulating your resources to score points, and have income, which will determine the winner of the game. This game has a great pedigree. The designers are very well-known and very popular designers. And then you have this game, Bison, based on these animals and the Native Americans that are hunting them down. And it just becomes something that probably wasn't worldwide, something that was ultimately favored. I don't know how many people worldwide know about the Native Americans and have an interest in them. Although here in America, they're very popular through culture, popular culture, in and out, if you will. So what we have here is an area control game where you're spending those resources that you're able to gain in order to get income, in order to do the same thing over and over again. I think what hurts the game a little bit is the look of the game. The game isn't something that pops from the table. The components are starting to age a little bit. It just has a dreary look to it. It's kind of hard to know, like the little rivers are really thin. It's kind of hard to know where your people are at. And it's another area control game. There are so many area control games on the market that it becomes very, very crowded, and I think it's hard to stand out. Now, this game does something a little bit different with the three kinds of currency, but at the end of the day, you know, you're really just kind of manipulating those around. I don't feel like that I was having fun playing with it. I think this is one of those games that mechanically it works, but I wonder how much fun you're going to have. With that said, you're going to see positive reviews on the Geek. People will like this game, and I'm just determined that there are people who like every game and people who are passionate about every game. I don't mean there are people that are passionate about every game, but their every game has someone who is passionate about it. And I think Bison falls into that. To me, it's mediocre. To me, it's a solid title. To me, it's a classic six. It's good. When you're playing it, it works. It's balanced. The things that you're doing okay. But it's missing that special something that makes it fun. I think you're more likely to like it the more you like area control. I think the more you like the theme, even though the theme's a little pasted on, I think that it works in this game. And this is not what I'm going to recommend. I would probably say more try this before you buy it. This is one that would fit into that category. And Bison is one that may fit into your collection if you're a particular type of gamer. There are so many games on the market that a game really has to stand out. And I don't really feel like Bison does that. So try this one before you buy it. If you're looking for something curious, if you're looking for a hidden gem, this might be it for you. A lot of people say, hey, this is the hidden gem. This is the one that's missing that people don't talk about. It might be it for you. It wasn't for me. Absolute purge for me. It's just not going to have somewhere in my collection. So it's something I'm going to want to pull off the shelf. Here's Bison, Thunder on the Prairie. This is an old Phalanx type game. Some of the components that you see inside probably won't match up with what you're used to getting today. You can get a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. Everybody's going to get one of these player boards, which really keeps track of how many of these animals that you have and all the exchange rates and possible actions that you would take on a turn. Works pretty good. They are uh, a little flexible, but you know, they're not exactly paper. Pretty good. You're going to get these tiles that you will place down. They look really neat. I think they're a little drab looking, perhaps, but you can kind of see how the river will go through, etc. And they come in this little funny looking shape that you don't see a whole lot in these tiles. You're going to get a bunch of cubes and little cardboard cutouts of things that you'll be utilizing in the game and a totem that will be turned around the board for first player marker. Otherwise, just a lot of wooden cubes. Nothing to write home about. The color's a little bit drab, but I think it looks pretty neat with these tiles once you have it all set up. Here's a rule book for Bison. You can already tell the font is very small on this. List of components without pictures, which is a big no-no nowadays. But once you open it up, they're all listed over here, and you can kind of see what they get. So that kind of makes up for it. Otherwise, here is setup, and just a lot of small fonts. So you have the little uh, chart that you have here, pictures of what you're doing. But I just found it very hard to read due to the size of the fonts. But everything in here is laid out pretty easy. I was probably able to read this probably about 20 to 30 minutes and be up and playing. The font was bigger, might have been 15. To set up the game, you're going to take the three tiles with the red circles and randomly set those up. They already have four of their color cubes, four white ones to mark their actions, a one-level and two-level TP, and a one-level and two-level canoe. Once that's all set up, you're ready to start playing. Now, the majority of what you're going to be doing here are your possible actions, and I'll just kind of show you this to illustrate it. 
You, everybody will draw one tile at the beginning of the turn, and this is an action that you can do. You can do any of these actions one time, and when you take an action, you'll be putting a cube on it to signify that you've already done it. Now, that this will be mandatory at some point in your four actions, you'll be placing a tile onto the board. This will allow you to build a TP, a canoe. This will allow you to move people on the board. This will be able to allow you to move five to one location, move five on the board one location, or you can move five up to three different locations. I'll kind of show you how that works. So placing a tile is very easy. You just place it out on the board. It does not have to match up any of the icons that are on it. You don't have to match up. You can place this in any direction that you see fit. Now the main gist of the game is you're gonna have a starting out on tens here. You have buffalo, you're gonna have turkeys, and you're gonna have fish. And you will be spending these in order to do things on the game. So if you spend it, you just go down one, and if you're able to add one, it will go up. So this is just a tracker of what you'll be doing. So when you take an action, so I just played a tile, I would put an action marker there to signify that I've already done it. Now I'm gonna set this to the side, just to illustrate what we're doing here on the board. Now when I place a tile on the board, I can place up to five hunters on those, and there'll be a chart over here on the player board to tell you how much they are. If I place none, then I will be able to gain a food, and that would just go up on my chart here. Now, if I place one out on the board, I can choose any one of the three terrain types. It is a free move. And then each one that I start adding to the board will start costing me one of my food resources over here, depending on how many I add to the board. For example, I'm going to add three to the board. That would require me to play four food. I can choose any of these food and any combination thereof, to put people out on the board. Now, on a separate action, if I wanted to build a TP, I can simply put a TP off and take off the number of cubes listed on this case. This one has a two cube on it, and I would put a TP out, taking these two cubes and putting them back in the supply. The same thing can be done with canoes. If somebody was on the water, I can take a cube off, matching the number on the canoe, and put a canoe down on the water, removing the cube from the board. That would be another possible action here on the board. So let's say I had a board set up like this. And I wanted to use this option right here of moving five adjacent to one spot. I might go one, two, three, four, putting these guys on the river. Let me reset that. Let's say instead I want to get people to this location, I go one, two, three. So anything surrounding it and putting it in one location. Now that would be different than this one. Let me reset the board. Let's say it was like this, which allows me to simply move five squares on the board. One, two, three, four, uh, five to one location. As opposed to this one, which allows me to move five up to three. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, maybe this one moves one. So those are the different movement options that you would have. At any point, if I need a certain one of these goodies, I can give up three to one. So I can give up one, two, three, and gain one of a different kind. The last thing I want to show you is a little part of the thing down here. So when I build one of these, I have to give up one bison, one turkey, and one fish. If I'm adding something with two, I have to give up two of each, three of each, and four of each, in addition to the people that I'm giving up on the board. So that's where this economy of food is going to come in. Now, each season, people are going to play four actions. And once that season is over, then you will count to see who's area control, and you'll be able to gain additional food depending on where you're at. So this would be buying for one fish. This would be buying for one bison. This area right here that all connects has three turkeys attached to it. Whoever has the area majority will get that food to spend on further turns. At the end of the game, whoever has the most... You add up all three types of animals, whoever has the most wins the game. So having 15s across the board would be very, very high in this aspect. Who should buy this game? First and foremost, I think if the theme attaches to you of the Native Americans, the hunting the bison, that's something that's really cool. And the more you know about how they did it and how it worked, I think the more interesting you'll find that topic and the more interesting you would find this theme in this game. With that said, you're going to like area control and resource management. Those are the two things that are really abounding through this game, would be area control and resource management. If you like those type of games, then you might like this game. 
although it's very simple. The resource management is not complicated. So if you're looking for a heavy euro, you're not going to find here. This is much more on the lighter scale. And I think that it just didn't find a place for me. But if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then this might be something you'd want to play. I'd probably recommend you trying it first, but for me, it's a purge. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel and lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.